Are you sick of being happy all the time? Do you look at miserable people and think, why then? Why can they be miserable and I can't be? Do you use phrases like, well, things can only get better and there's always a silver lining and always look on the bright side of life? Well, don't worry, because I'm here today to show you how to be miserable and help you develop the kind of face that looks like a warthog being sprayed by a skunk. But make no mistake, this is going to take some hard work. Nobody's born unhappy. These people earn that right. But with Tim's 10 top tips that I'm about to give you, you too can become a bitter old cynic in almost no time at all. So what are you waiting for? Get a frown on your face, moan about the cook government and kids not having any respect for their elders and let's get on with the job at hand. Tip number one, whine and complain about stuff that's out of your control. Great examples will be the weather, other people's actions and maybe the housing market. Never miss an opportunity to tell people how hard and tough life is and then ram home your point with a long list of examples of what's wrong with the world today. Number two, follow celebrity culture. Everybody knows that celebrities lead charmed and perfect lives. They are the most balanced human beings on the planet. Read up on them, yearn to be them, and most of all, idolise them as the gods they are and always understand that your life is a meaningless travesty compared to theirs. Tip number three, become a martyr. Always put other people's happiness first. Whether it's your spouse, your kids or even the mailman's, just understand that their happiness is far more important than yours. And if you get sick and maybe die because you don't look after yourself, don't worry, because that'll just cement your place in the Martyrs Hall of Fame for years to come. Tip number four, watch more TV. If you're watching five, six, seven hours of TV, ramp it up a little bit, but make sure it's a diet of reality TV programmes and best of all, local TV news. You need to know who's on the rampage in your neighbourhood and who's murdered whom. If you're ever tempted to go to bed at night feeling cheerful, resist that urge. Turn on the TV news and soon you can be reading about the worsening economy, rising crime rates and foot-tapping politicians hanging around in local restrooms. Number five, refuse to see other people's points of view. If you have an opinion, stick to it. You've spent years fine-tuning your belief system. And nobody likes a fickle, weak-willed flip-flopper. So don't let overwhelming contrary evidence persuade you that you could ever be wrong. Number six, catastrophize. You've not got a bad boss, you've got a boss from hell. You've not been sick, you've been violently sick. You've not had a bad day, you've had a nightmare of a day. Get the message? If something's worth feeling bad about, it's worth feeling really bad about. Don't ever catch yourself thinking, oh well, could have been worse. That'll just, let, let, that'll just serve to lessen the impact. Soon, and with a bit of practice and skill, you will be slipping lines like, I was violently sick and my boss from hell made my day a complete nightmare, into any conversation with a plum. Number seven. Try to defy the ageing process. Aging's for losers with no money. Book in some body altering procedures and then book in some more. 
If your surgeon tells you you look like a trout, fly to Bolivia and give your money to somebody that's not going to put your health first. If your friends start to look at you a little bit strangely, that just means you need one or two more ops just to tighten things up a little bit behind the ears. Don't ever admit that you could be getting old. Aging losers. Number seven, be jealous. If your friend gets a rise, or inherits some money, or wins the lottery, that just means there's less for you. There's only so much to go around, you know. So seethe, whine to mutual friends, and look miserable as sin every time you see them to make them feel bad. Just remember, if they were a real friend, they'd give you all their money and the title to their house, so it's obvious they hate you anyway, so you have nothing to lose. Number eight, one-up people. If you're in a group of people and somebody's telling an interesting story, tell a better one. Try whatever you can to make them look small. It doesn't matter if it's true or not. In fact, if it isn't true, so much the better. Because then you'll probably contradict yourself later on and everybody will know that you're lying. And you can look even more idiotic. Don't be bashful about slipping phrases in like I was wrestling crocodiles before that guy Dundee. I stormed the Allied beaches the day before the joint forces turned up on my own. And I'd have been the first man on Mars if it hadn't been for those bigwigs in government that found out about my prototype titanium brain and got cold feet. Finally, laugh less. The world's a serious place and people need to understand that. If you meet somebody that wants to make light of a serious situation by telling a joke, tell them it's inappropriate. If it isn't inappropriate, don't let that stop you. Ruin it for them by coming in with a punchline before the end. Or say, yeah, that was funny when I heard it ten years ago. Or maybe, well, yeah, I suppose that is funny for you, but you do realise there's people in hospital that can't laugh at the moment. It doesn't really matter. Just bring everybody down. So there you have it. Now you know how to be thoroughly miserable. It's going to take some practice, but I have every confidence that you can do it because I see people perfect this day after day after day, and you're just as good as they are. So get to it, and you'll have a face that will frighten young children in no time. Worst of all.